This is going to be a tutorial of sorts on lighting. I notice a lot of people have trouble with lighting their avatars or controlling the shadows, just not knowing exactly how to set them up. So I'm going to reset all of the shadows and lighting settings on this and we're going to try and get them back, but I think this is a good example of lighting done well. Alright, so first things first, let's reset all the settings. Alright, so I've gone through and reset all of the settings to default for the shadows and lighting, rim lighting, all of that. So generally when you get a model you're gonna get lighting like this. And for some people that's what they're going for, but I'm not a big fan of the lighting on the face being like this, and especially when you get lights in your scene, which should generally be avoided, but they happen. So when you have a light in your scene, you're gonna get like double shadows of sorts. And on your clothes, double shadows look all right. On your skin, you start getting like weird levels that you just, they're not gonna look good. So we're gonna fix all of that. Let's delete this light and begin. So for the skin, select both skins. Go to the lighting ramp. This isn't really a video that you're supposed to just copy. Um, you're gonna learn things in this and hopefully you can extrapolate the information and kind of learn, do your own thing. So the lighting ramp is just in light is white and not in light is dark. So you can do whatever you want. You can put a rainbow on your character so that all of your shadows are rainbow colored and not what we're going for. So let's go for Tune Skin. I include some. This one, or this one. I think this one fits this model a little bit better. You can also just search for skin, or you can use some of the Tune Skins that come with your model if you're just using MMDs. A lot of MMDs come with uh, Tune Textures, like all of these. And if you have these already, they're already set up for your model, so just use those. If you don't like them, you can draw your own or use the ones I provide. So we're going to use Tune Skin on this. And this is a little too intense for my liking, so I am going to drop the Shadow Strength down to around 0.5. And then you get these sort of subtle shadows. They're not super subtle, but more subtle than before, that's for sure. So you can move the lighting around and see what that looks like. I'm pretty happy with that. So another thing I like to do for the skin is go into the rim lighting and then I'll grab the color picker and I'll grab like a blushy spot on their face. And then I'll get this color. Then we get in real close. Where I glitch out. <laughs> Get in close on an angle. Select the skin again. And we're just going to set the rim lighting color bias to 1 so that we're using this color here instead of the color that it's on, which is the face. And then adjust the rim sharpness a little. We're just aiming to see something right now. So, room emission, you can tell it, it is there. Bias is one. And now you can sort of see, you start getting these darker spots where the angle is steepest. So let's get in close and you can see that on a steep angle you get these softer tones. And Now we can adjust these so that that changes. But I kind of, I want to go for something a little darker than skin, but a little pinky. And then you kind of get, you start getting these soft or not so soft um, curves that become visible. So now you can see your lips and you can see stuff like that. And for some people, this might be exactly what they're going for. 
I don't like it when it looks super 3D. So I'm going to adjust the color bias so that it gets closer to the skin color. And right about there where you, you can't really see the curve anymore, but you still get that slight darkening on steep angles. That's what I go for. And it works great on the legs. You can see the edges have like a blushy color. You can adjust that color to whatever you want. But for skin, that's pretty much what I go for. Now for the hair. So hair and ears in this case, I suppose. Uh, let's go to lighting. The normal lighting ramp is fine for this. I generally, for the hair, I don't want the shadows to be like huge. I kind of only want them to be on the undersides. So I'm going to adjust the offset here so that the shadows kind of get closer to the underside of all of this. And that's probably fine in this case. You can adjust the strength to be whatever you want. The strength of your shadow, by default, is going to have a lot to do with where you are. So like if I adjust the lighting in this scene... Alright, that's not going to work. Um, if I adjust the lighting in the scene, you're going to see that the shadows are adjusted with that. And your shadows are going to be different in every scene. Like if there is no light, it's just going to use ambient colors. And if you start making your shadow strength too low, you're not going to be able to see it in some scenes. So I generally like to be above 0.5. Alright, let's get back to this hair. Uh, actually, that looks pretty good. It's about where I want it. And we'll move the light around to see how that looks. Yeah, I have no issue with that. You may want to adjust it a little more for this. So, let me just go in here and go back to the offset and set it a little bit lower. So in this specific thing, it looks good. So, yeah, I'm pretty good at that. Clothes are totally fine defaults, in my opinion. I think for a lot of cases, keeping your clothes on default will look great. What I've been doing recently, though, is grabbing the clothes and lighting. I include a ramp called Black Shadows. This ramp is basically, it's got the hard cutoff. Here, I can open it actually. It's got a hard cutoff here, but it has a smooth gradient. You can see that. So for clothing, I like this a lot because it lets me add normal maps with, with uh, really subtle detail. So shadow strength for my clothes, uh, 0.75 or 1 is fine with this setup. Uh, I think that looks pretty good. You can mess with the flat or full ambient lighting. Full ambient lighting is going to make you take in colors from all around you, but it might make you look a little more standard. So I'm just going to keep it at flat. And then what I was talking about with the normals is you can go into your normal maps and I can grab like I think I have it called cloth well let's grab some random normal and then I will increase the tiling and now and now because I'm using a softer shadow map you can see that we get all of this variation in color. Whereas if I was using the default shadow map... Okay, select. <laughs> the default one, you would have all these hard cutoffs and you don't get all that detail, you lose a lot. So I'm just gonna go back to where we were. And I'm pretty happy with that. And that's, oh, the eyes. The eyes are 
good most of the time, but can get pretty bad sometimes, especially with the settings we have for our skin. So for the eyes, for the most part, I just remove all of the shadows. So let me just open up the materials folder again. Go into the eyes. I think these are the eyes. They are not. There we go. So I just set the shadow strength for the eyes to nothing or very low and that fixes a lot of the situ a lot of the situations where your eyes get really dark or just look unnatural. So I think that's about where I want that. Clothes look good. That is a finished model. And now I'm going to pull that light out again like we did earlier and see how it looks this time. So, oops. Move this point light to zero, zero, zero. And you're still going to get those hard cutoffs, but because the skin doesn't have really hard shadows anymore, you don't get those mixed shadows. It looks bright, but you don't get any of those like mixed shadows the way you did before. So some maps have mirrors where there's like lights in front of the mirrors and you look really bad, but with this setup, you look good. In my opinion. And that's pretty much it for lighting. That's what I do on almost all of my models, and I think the results look good. Thanks for watching, I hope this helps you.